Bex MP uh, George Galloway, um, you were expelled from the Labour Party. He, of course, never was. Some said that he made the party unelectable in the 70s and 80s. But how inspirational a figure was he for you? In fact, he was my character witness at my expulsion uh, kangaroo court, uh, along with Michael Foote and the leader of the biggest union affiliated to the Labour Party. But it didn't take them long to disregard these star witnesses and they threw me out. Uh, he was, as you've just, I think, in a wonderful uh, package there, showed uh, a really quite majestic uh, figure, head and shoulders above uh, so many of those uh, who bit at his heels at the time. He was absolutely inspirational to millions of people. But there's one thing I think you've got wrong, and the media commentary has got wrong today. The point that's being made over and over again is that most people disagreed with Mr. Ben, but they admired him and so on. But actually, on the issues that he stood for, most people agreed with him then and now. From his attempts to bring oil into public ownership in 1974 as the energy secretary, right through to the war on Iraq and attitudes to nuclear weapons in the European Union and so on, the majority of British people supported Mr. Ben's view uh, on these things. And uh, I think that that's important because we mustn't allow, uh, if you'll forgive me saying so, uh, Mr. Ben to be put in a museum now in a, in a glass case so that we can look upon him and wonder at uh, what used to be. In fact, his point of view is still alive and kicking, and uh, he wasn't the last of the Mohicans. There's plenty of Mohicans left. Uh, well, and presumably you'd like to count yourself uh, as one of those. But when you say that, most, wh that when most people uh, agreed hmm. with him, I mean, how can that be the case? I mean, this was the man who led to the formation of the SDP. This was a man whose political views uh, not only divided his party, but uh, never attracted the sort of support that would have ever elected him to power. Well, I I'd like you to tell me a single one of his uh, trademark uh, policies that is not supported by the majority of British people. He supported the public ownership of gas and electricity and railways. He opposed a new generation of nuclear weapons. He opposed the war in Iraq and so on. And on all of these things, he was right. He opposed the undemocratic character of the European Union. Uh, on that, he has overwhelming uh, support in Britain. It's the people making these points, which are entirely wrong, by the way, and I was there. It was, I mean, you said that he split the party by standing against Dennis Healy. We could just as equally reverse that and say Dennis Healy split the party by standing against Tony Benn. There was a vacancy. There was an election. Two men okay. stood for it. Right. One let's, didn't well, split well, the party by okay. standing well, let's, let's if not, the other one didn't. Let's, let's not split hairs over, his, uh, <laughs> over the, the, the party and the Labour Party. But well, what about him as a man? So, I mean, so he stood for you as a, as a character reference. What mm. was it about him as, a, as an individual, as a character, a man who obviously had I mean, huge conviction, even if you didn't agree with his political views? He was a prince uh, amongst men. He wasn't uh, actually an aristocrat. Uh, his father's viscountcy was given to him uh, as a peerage by the Liberal Party, who he had served. So he, doesn't, he, he didn't have blue blood, Mr. Uh, ben, but he did, of course, come from a wealthy background and a very distinguished one. Uh, but he was a prince amongst men. He was the gentlest, most honorable, most filled with integrity of any of the political figures of this age. I mean, he put up with all of this backbiting and media demonization, which you'd have to have been there at the time. Think Scargill, Crow, uh, uh, Livingston, wrapped together, doubled, trebled, and that's how bad it was. But he, he endured it all uh, with a smile, without a bad word. Uh, he was uh, far more sanguine about it than I uh, would or could have uh, been. He was a gentleman through all of that. And in the swirling morass uh, that British politics has uh, become, he really stood head and shoulders out and above it all. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about, you know, uh, your own sort of career compared to his, because, I mean, he never resorted, did he, to any sort of gimmickry or, or you know, sort of self-publicity, uh, which perhaps... Thanks very uh, much. Uh, well, I mean, in terms of, you know, big brother appearances and things like that, because he didn't need to, did he? He was very innovative. You see, this is a point. Uh, he, he didn't, you're right, uh, do that, but I don't think he would have ruled it out. He was the man who pioneered so many things in the 1960s, postcodes, postage stamps that didn't just have the Queen's head on them, TSR2, Concord, nuclear power, 
he, he tape recorded his own interviews with the BBC and others in the 1960s because he didn't trust you to faithfully report what he said. No one had ever done any of these things before. He was a really progressive, innovative man. He summed up Mr. Wilson's promise of this white hot heat of the technological revolution that Labour tried to bring about in the, in the 1960s. So I, I don't think that you should rule out that Mr. Ben uh, wouldn't have tried a trick or two to get a wider message uh, across. Uh, but he was, uh, I think this is common currency. He never had a bad word to say personally about anyone. Uh, even uh, Tony Blair, uh, when I asked him if he'd appear in my forthcoming documentary, The Killings of Tony Blair, he declined on the basis that it all sounded rather too personal. Uh, so that's the kind of man he was. Uh, but his principle was ironclad. No one would ever be able to accuse him. A man who grew more left-wing as he grew older, which is the opposite, of course, of most Labour politicians, uh, he never compromised on principle. He was ironclad on that to the end. Yeah, and Harold Wilson, uh, as we heard in that report by Ben Wright, d describing him as a man who uh, immatured with age uh, in, ter in, terms of his, uh, in terms of his radicalism. Is, is that what he was getting at, do you think? Well, uh, Mr. Wilson started out a very great hope uh, for Labour people, uh, but he gave up prematurely, uh, having himself rather over-matured with age. So... I think uh, we'd put that uh, rather nasty comment by Mr. Wilson down to his premature maturity. George Galloway, thanks very much indeed for joining us.